Hey everyone, welcome back. So you now have the theoretical understanding about the convolution operations in deep neural networks. And while learning the convolution operations, you have understood many concepts like kernel size, padding, strides, and many more, isn't it? So from this video, what we are going to do is we are going to use all our theoretical understanding and implement it in this TensorFlow deep learning framework so that we'll get the better understanding of all the theoretical concepts that we have learned. Okay. So to begin with, what I'm doing here is I'm importing my necessary libraries. That is, I'm importing my TensorFlow and from that TensorFlow, I'm importing my layers and models as well. So let me just execute this cell. Okay. Now to apply the convolution layer, we make use of conv2d function, which is present in tf.keras.layers.conv2d. So to understand it better, what I'll do is I'll just open the documentation of this conv2d layer. So if I open the documentation of this conv2d layer, see, this is how it looks like. And this conv2d layer takes many arguments. So important arguments are filters, kernel size, strides, padding, and many more. So let me just come down over here. Okay, so the important arguments are filters, kernel size, strides and padding. So the filters is nothing but an integer which represents the dimensionality of the output space. So what we'll do is like as we progress in this video, I'll explain in detail as what is this particular filter means. And the second important argument that we have is kernel size, which is nothing but an integer or the tuple or list of two integers, which specifies the height and width of 2D convolution window and the stride refers to the step size and the padding we can either mention as valid or same. So when it is valid, what it means is like there won't be any padding and if I mention as same, then what it would do is the system would add the sufficient padding so that we will not be losing the dimension whenever we perform the convolution operation. So this is enough theory for now. What we'll do is I'll go back to my Google Colab. So let me execute this cell. But before that, let's understand as what are the things that I've written over here. As a first step, what I have written as I have specified my input shape as 1, 28, 28, 1. So why have I specified like this? See, the reason is whenever we are dealing with image data, especially in deep learning frameworks such as PyTorch or TensorFlow, we'll be sending the data in some specified format. And in case of TensorFlow, we'll be sending the data in the format of batch size, cross, height, cross width, cross number of channels. So this is the order that we are going to send the data whenever we are sending the data for deep learning framework of TensorFlow. In my case, I have specified my input shape as 1, 28, 28, 1. So that means I'm sending a single image. So this one refers to the batch size. So I'm sending a single image and this single image is having the dimension of 28 comma 28 comma 1. So this dimension or this 28 comma 28 refers to the shape of my image. Okay. So this shape of the image is 28 by 28 and I'm having a single color channel. That means I'm dealing with a grayscale image. You can remember all our theoretical sections guys. This is what I have said, right? If we are having a single channel in the input in the image means that's a grayscale. But in case of color image, I'll be having three, three color channels. So since I'm having the shape as 28 comma 28 comma 1, so that means it's an image which is having the dimension as 28 by 28 and color channel as 1. Okay. And here what I've done is I have created an X as a tensor object. This tensor object is nothing but tf.random.normal. That means I'm initiating this particular X to some tensor object, which is having the shape of 1 comma 28 comma 1. So that is what it means. Now, after creating my input X, I'm sending this input X. In other words, I'm applying this input X to my con2d layer. So to apply to the con2d layer, first what I have done is I have defined my con2d layer as like this. Layers.con2d of inside the parenthesis I have specified as filters as one. So for now, just understand as this is just a single operation that I'm doing. So We'll come to this part of filters as we progress in this video. For now, let's see it as, okay, what happens if I use filters as one, okay? So after filters, I have specified my kernel size of three comma three. And after that, I have specified my input shape as input shape one colon blank. The reason because as we know already in case of input, input shape, we'll be sending in the form of batch size, height, width and color channel. So the dimension of single image will be height width by number of color channels, isn't it? And because of that reason, I have specified like this. 
Now to apply this COM2D layer on my input X, I'm multiplying with X. Got it, so let me erase everything over here. Okay, so now I have erased everything. So what it means is I'm initiating my tensor object as X and I'm applying on my convolution layer. Okay, so once I apply it on my convolution layer, I'll be getting the output. So let me write down as whatever the data that we have. So the data that we have observed is I'm having an input image which is having the shape of 28 comma 28 and this is having a single color channel. Okay. So this is a, this is a single data that we have and on this input data, I'm applying a kernel of 3 comma 3. So what does it mean by convolution operation? I'll place this kernel on top of my image and I'll place a different different position to get my transformed image. So this is what we have learned, isn't it? So when I apply the filter of 3 cross 3, that is kernel, kernel of size 3 cross 3 on an image of dimension 28 by 28, if I don't use the padding at that time, I'll be losing the dimension from each axis. So my resulting image will be of the dimension 26 by 26. So this is our theoretical understanding, isn't it? Now let's do one thing guys. Let me just execute this code cell and observe the resulting output shape. Okay. So let me just execute this. Okay. As we can see in the output, the resulting shape by applying this convolution operation is 1 comma 26 comma 26 comma 1. The reason we are losing a dimension because in my case, I have specified my padding as zero. In other words, if you observe it over here, I have not specified anything for padding. Hence, because of that reason, since there is no padding, I am losing a single dimension across each axis. Now observe the next cell guys. If you observe my next cell here inside my con2d, I'm specifying one more parameter as padding. For this padding, I have set as same. So when I set it as same, what it would do is the system would add the appropriate padding for my input data such that I'll not be losing a dimension whenever I perform the convolution operation. So let me just execute this cell as well so that we'll get the clear understanding. I'll just execute this. Okay, so now if you observe the output, I'm now having the shape as 28 comma 28 comma 1. Got it? So what we have learned till now, so till now we have learned as how to use the COM2D layer and in that COM2D layer, how we can specify the kernel size as well as how to specify the padding. And while specifying my kernel size and the padding, one important thing that we have to remember is we have to specify our input shape. In my case, the input shape of individual image is 28 comma 28 comma 1. Okay. So with this, we come to the end of this video on learning the basics of using the COM2D layer. In the upcoming videos, we learn in detail as how the other functionality, in other words, how the other parameters in COM2D layer works. So I'll see you in the next video.